Hi, I'm Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is Carmelo Fuquendo. What a beautiful, beautiful name. What a beautiful family name you have. Thank you. We're going to have an extraordinary show. Not only are you going to see some fabulous cakes, you're going to see architecture, sculpture, an artist's work. It is amazing. So, you know, look out Cake Boss, look out DLC, because we have him here in Worcester. And he's from Worcester. Well, for the majority of his time, he's from Worcester, which makes it oh so sweet. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Now, tell me, just so somebody can get a little background on you, where were you born and how long have you been here in Worcester and kind of what's your little story with Worcester? I was born in Manhattan, raised in the Bronx until um, I was 10 years old. Came back and forth from the Bronx uh, when I was growing up, four, five, six, seven, eight years old. Came to Worcester to live permanently when I was 10 and I've been here 33 years. So oh, tell us about the next great baker. Well, the next great baker was a great experience for me. Um, I had no idea I was going to be on the show. Uh, I got a call from my dad about a year ago uh, with bad news. He told me to call my, he says, listen, give your cousin a call in North Carolina. Her name is Marilyn. He said, uh, she's having heart surgery. And um, I couldn't believe it because she's two years younger than me. Um, so I called her. I asked her if it was okay if I could come up to visit her, you know, maybe hang out with her for a while. I went out there for seven days. And um, for four days, I stayed specifically with her at her house. And uh, just talking and catching up, I asked her, what do you do for work? She showed me, she brought out some albums and um, she started showing me these beautiful cakes she does. She does beautiful wedding cakes. And when I, st I saw the cakes, uh, right away, bells went off in my, in my mind. I said, wow, imagine if I could take these cakes and apply my artistic uh, perspective to them, what I could do. And right away she started, she says, you know what, let me show you a few things. And uh, she showed me how to do some fondant real, real quick. She showed me how to do the, the cake, actually, the mixture. And um, she asked me to do the fondant. She goes, I'm going to do something. I want you to repeat it. I did it, and she could not believe that in one try I did it. And she said, she actually called out to her daughter, Jody, and she said, hey, get a camera. I'm going to take a picture with your cousin. He's going to be famous. Now, when she said that, I completely, like, just laughed it off and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But six months later, I'm on TV. It's crazy. <laughs> when you came back, did you start making cakes right away from her, you know, from, that, from your experience with her? I came back, and my grandson was turning one years old. So I told my wife, I want to do the cake for him. Uh, his name is Adrian. And um, she goes, okay, go ahead, do it. I'll let you do it. So I did his cake, and my wife was amazed by the cake. She could not believe it. Um, my, fr my, my grandson and my son's friends came over, and they started taking pictures. And we're in the new wave of uploading things in a, mm -hmm. in a second. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not into, I wasn't into Facebook or any of that stuff. My phone is still cheap. I have one of those flip phones still. Everybody goose on it. So I'm not into all that. And right away, he, he, he uploaded it onto Facebook. And he goes, he goes, hey, man, you should see the response you're getting on Facebook with this cake. And um, from there, that, that Tickle Me Elmo cake produced all the other cakes I, I've done. Okay, so that was a Tickle Me Elmo cake yeah. that you did. That was your very first one. First cake. Yeah, and it was beautiful. It was very vivid in color. Yeah, a lot of colors, a lot of colors. I wanted, to, I wanted to wow everyone. You know, I thought I could wow everyone, and I did. Yeah, and Elmo is a great character, too. too. He is I mean, big... it's a bright happy cherry character what other cake did you do where before you hit the show where you felt this is really good I mean I stretched myself more here and I and I liked this you know I did a I did a cake for Jose Antonio Rivera the boxer mm -hmm. three-time world champion and I did a cake for his son when he turned one and uh, it was a giraffe cake and I really said wow man this is nice I could I could really get into this um, but I want to be I want to be specific about something. Most of the cakes I did in the beginning were to friends, paying them favors instead of giving them money. I would pay them with cakes and to relatives. That's how I was just kind of like mm -hmm. I was using them as guinea pigs. I was just but saying, they're beautiful. I mean, even for a <laughs> guinea pig, I'm, I mean, no, I mean that's that's a skill. It is, and I have no idea where I get that from because I never learned that. I just like I said, my cousin Marilyn, um, she just showed me how to do the mixture. She didn't show me how to do any art. I, that's all come, yeah. comes from me, and I've never taken any classes. I just, I see things, and I know how to put them together. I don't know why, but I do. But you do. So what is fondant? It's, it's, um, it's a layer that you put over the frosting. To, it keeps the cake insulated. It keeps it moist. 
It protects the cake. So it's like a little, like a little glaze, no, like a I'd, little hardening. I'd say, I'd say it's an eighth of an inch of uh, sugar and marshmallow combined. Okay. Um, you can buy it made, or you can make it yourself. Um, depending, if you make it yourself, I think you have a better chance of it tasting good. Some, some of the ones that you buy are not; they don't taste that good. But um, it's incredible to work with. You can com com you can convert fondant into incredible pieces of art. Okay, so you can make people with it and oh yeah things and so in other words it gives structure well you need a structure you need a structure but the fondant helps like if you do buttercream for example I did a Michael Jackson cake and I did a spider-man cake and I mentioned these two because I'm I really like Michael Jackson when he was a young kid I grew up with him um, and spider-man incredible superhero <laughs> uh, so when I did those cakes had I just done them in buttercream you wouldn't be able to it would be nice but it you wouldn't be able to see details. Yeah, it doesn't punch out at you. Exactly. Now, when you use fondant and you color the same structure with, uh, th that already has buttercream with fondant, now you can manipulate that fondant and make it look so real. Um, and people love it. You just walk. When, when you bring that cake to somebody, they go, oh, my God. They don't believe it's a cake. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it, it adds that. Wow factor. That. What, what is something challenging that you, uh, challenging artistically uh, that you've done? Oh man, I, I, you know, I just finished doing a huge cake for uh, Kinefax 50th anniversary. They make uh, industrial parts for uh, nuclear reactors and things like that. And they're located here in Worcester and they just celebrated the 50th anniversary here at Maxwell. I did a cake for them. That was challenging because of the time. They wanted, they wanted me to do their cake so bad. Um, they didn't care what I produced mm -hmm. in two days. I usually, t it usually takes me three days to do a cake. Okay. Um, so I, this one was only two, and I, so I couldn't sleep. I had to stay up around the clock to finish it. And um, I was able to finish it, and I was really satisfied with the, with the outcome. And it was really challenging for me. Because I was sleepy, because of the, the size of it. Right. And, and the time frame that you had? And the time frame. Did you have to frame. keep like, putting it back in the refrigerator? If, if, like, if it's stacked or well, if it's in, was this one stacked or was it like just square and? It, it was square, but it was a machine, it was a machine that was stacked and it had different parts to it that had to be, you had to do them right for it to look like the machine, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. to reproduce their machine. And just the time, one of the things you mentioned, you gotta, those cakes have to be in the freezer for at least a day. This one, because it was so big, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. So. I had to open my windows and, you know, the oil, burn a lot of oil. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it called the Cake Father? It's called the Cake Father because I imitate Marlon Brando. I do a good imitation of Marlon Brando. And um, my brother had called me and said, hey, man, you need a good name. You need a good name. And I was thinking, I was debating what, what I would call myself. And I said, how about the Cake Father? What do you think about that? And I said, listen to this uh, Listen to this uh, catchphrase. I'm going to make you a cake you can't refuse. And he loved it. <laughs> so you basically do anything. Have yeah. you ever had to refuse anything? Um, I've never, I have had to turn a lot of people down because of the volume of people who want me to do cakes. And now with the newfound celebrity and fame, uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, uh, I'm going out to schools, talking to school, talking to kids. I'm doing a lot of, going out, doing a lot of appearances, just signing autographs and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's really hard to, but I have to say no to a lot of people, you know? Plus I have a life too, you know, yeah. with my wife and stuff. Um, my kids are almost all gone. I got one left to go and she's leaving soon. So, I, you know. You're gonna get more staff, you think? Maybe, it depends. Right now I'm on hold. I'm kind of in limbo right now as this interview is going on because the show is not done yet, yeah. one, and I'm still under contract with TLC. So I can't, I, can't, I don't want to open a bakery and tie my hands on that if something else comes along. Right. So I'm just kind of sitting back right now and enjoying the ride. Yeah, yeah. And making some beautiful And making cakes, cakes on the side, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just so amazed. Some of them are so lifelike or so character-like. Yeah. You had a, um, from the Tim Burton movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you had yeah. one. Yeah, that was the night before Christmas. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, you had that one, and, and you know, and we're going to be rolling pictures, so people are going to be able to see that. Now, how many years in total have you been baking cakes? A year. A year. You did a UFO. We have a package. Um, we have you know, sports. <laughs> if you have a sports team, SpongeBob, um, basketball hoops. Um, there was even a little Asian cake uh, based. So if you like an anime character, you can have an anime character done. Um, 
it takes you, so you said three days. How long can somebody, I mean, should somebody get in touch with you three months before, two weeks before? I mean, how does it usually roll with yeah, you? Yeah, if you want a pastry, someone like, for example, my cuatro leches or custard flan, things like that, you can get a hold of me and I'll do it within the three days. If you call me today, I could have it for you in three days. But if you want, that's if I'm not busy doing other things. Right. If you want a cake, you got to get a hold of me like three months in advance. You've got to give me three months. If not, I can't, I can't do the cake for you. And good luck. Thank you. You've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.